Okay, welcome back to another episode of A Dose of Reality. This feels different. This feels weird. I know, I know fan base is watching like, what's going on here? <laughs> this feels weird to me too, to be introducing the podcast. Our normal host is sitting in the studio with us, <laughs> but has decided to take the day off. She's just like, no, nah, I'm not doing it today. So here I am sitting in her seat, having prejudged her <laughs> beforehand. Like, yeah, I could do that. Now I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the pressure, man. I'm sweating a little bit. I'm like, oh, I got to carry the show. I got to host it. It's different. It's a different vibe. So newfound respect for Nefertat. <laughs> um, I'm excited for this episode. We got our brother in today. Retu Pedi Basmir Amun. Right, who back? Greetings. S- sitting with us. You got to tell the people what your name means because <laughs> they might not be familiar with you. Yeah, you know? it's a long name, isn't it? Yeah. Retu Pedi Basmir Amun or be updated tone now. Retu Pedi Basmir Amun. Mm. It means clever, smart, wise one of Bast, beloved of Amun. So, you know, special, special yeah. name for a special the, the, being. The ancestors <laughs> got that one wrong. That's what we can say. <laughs> they looked down and said, this is a special being. I don't know what they Let's were thinking. Let's give him a special name. Stacked his name up as well. Yeah. I don't know what they were thinking, yeah. but that's not what I've seen. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm, joking. I'm, on. I'm excited for this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to talk about a couple different different things today. I want to dive straight in, mm-hmm. to be honest. I want to get your take on Hitler. Because Hitler was moving kind of mad back in the day. He was. He a lot was. of people were dying by... Yeah, in by the millions. Yeah, yeah. In, the, in the millions. Yeah, was. He, was, he was doing a few things. But I want... Baba Yanun has obviously provided us with information just to let us know the hows and the whys behind what Hitler was doing. Because mm-hmm. obviously we know, we look at the atrocities and obviously from one side you just look at it like, oh wow, that was terrible. But why was he doing it from his perspective? How... Mm-hmm. Was he able to get into the position he was in? Mm-hmm. I actually want to lead off from, it's funny because episode one of A Dose of Reality, if anyone hasn't seen it, why haven't you seen it? It's episode one, Aliens, it's on the Spotify right now. We'll have that pop up. We'll have that pop up little ad. Yeah, edited. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, little plug. Yeah, Aliens, episode one. In episode one, we were actually going through some of the UFO sightings going back to the 40s, mm-hmm. early 50s and those type of times, um, signs like... Kenneth Arnold, the military um, pilot, and he saw certain things in the sky and all the different signs. There was quite a few back then, as we know. And leading up to crafts being sighted over the White House. Like we said, if if you're not familiar with it, check that episode out for sure. There were crafts sighted over the White House, various reports of these crafts. Um, And obviously the government came out at that time were like, we we didn't see anything. (laughs) The sky seemed clear to us. We don't know what you're talking about. That was a weather balloon. Yeah, weather balloon. (laughs) Their favorite one. Um, Classic one. Yeah, the classic go-to lie, weather balloon. But yeah, there were craft sighted over the White House. And what we explained back then was that there was a situation with the extraterrestrials meeting with the then president. Who was the president at that time period? Eisenhower. Was it Eisenhower? Eisenhower. He would have just come in. Yeah, so it was Eisenhower and they had a meeting with him. It's funny though, because I want people, everyone to keep track with what's going on in the modern time. We've pointed certain things out about what governments are saying today Mm -hmm. about UFOs and the different meetings that are happening that we have to keep ourselves apprised of, particularly when we're dealing with the Congress meeting, where who was it? David Grush and the pilot, uh, Ryan Graves, Graves, David Fravo Fravo came out and, and said various things about the government having UFO programs, programs to deal specifically with alien bodies. What was what was the terminology they used to describe alien bodies? Biological yeah. entities, yeah, bi- yeah. yeah, something like that, right? Non- yeah, yeah, non-human biological matter. So alien bodies, dealing with crafts and the remnants of crafts, so on and so forth. And obviously, you've had for a while high-ranking officials or ex high-ranking officials of government and various bodies within government or connected to government coming out and saying, listen, there's been UFOs for quite some time. There are plenty of people within government who know about it. There are programs to deal with it, to deal with both crafts and bodies, so on and so forth, to deal with the technology, to try and recreate the technology, so on and so forth, to deal with any potential threats. And obviously we as Sabians know, Baba Yananan has been telling us for some time about the extraterrestrial involvement and their involvement in the day-to-day happenings of human lives, mm-hmm. whether it's technologically or even our creation, which we might get onto, and the role that they played in the different races that or different species that we see on the planet today. So that's where I want to pick up from. Going back to Hitler, I want to start with, okay, so 
There were crafts over the White House, right? That's correct. Who were these beings? Why were they there? And how does this eventually tie into Hitler? Yeah. So um, the crafts themselves, uh, mm. the UFOs or UAPs, whatever term mm. we're using now, were seen over the White House, Washington, D.C. in 1952. Mind you, 1952 is a very, very interesting year. And if you actually Google search the big flap, you'll get a lot of results on that because there were so many sightings, so many UFO sightings in 1952. It actually was given a term, the big flap. Right. So a very interesting year. Mm. Um, now, what Bubba explained that these were beings from the Ashtar Command star system that made contact with the government. So um, like we were saying, President Eisenhower, who would have just come into term mm. and, and people, you know, governmental officials and were essentially making contact with these government beings because as Bubba explained during those times it was quite a common thing for extraterrestrials to make contact and trade technology mm. often in in exchange for human abductions right. which is right. what the you know which the we gotta get explained. onto we gotta we gotta talk about abductions we can't we gotta yeah we can't shy away from can't that shy topic. away from it we yeah gotta, yeah, we got to yeah. die into why? Why do extraterrestrials take humans? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll go. <laughs> it's, a, it's a whole different, a whole nother story, isn't mm. it? But um, yeah, uh, essentially they made contact, like we said, with the government officials and they wanted to sort of, you know, guide, make contact and just just do what it is they do, trade mm. technology, etc. Mm. Now, what the master explained is that when the Ashtar command beings made contact with the government, they weren't very happy with the way things went, mm. um, you know, and he also explained things like he actually, they actually found that they thought that humans were quite destructive and, and, and things of that nature. Mm. But for whatever reason, that didn't go as planned. The Ashtar command weren't very happy with that meeting at all. So what he explained is they actually went back in time mm. at that point. Now, obviously, that might sound a bit airy. It might sound a bit bizarre. But um, time travel isn't really as mystical as it's bigged up to be. It's not something that just exists in science fiction movies. It's an actuality. Mm. And there's so much um, evidence and even theories to support time travel, you know, all the way back to Einstein's theory of relativity. When you talk about time dilation and how time is relative depending on the speed and gravitational effects around you if that makes sense mm. and then you've even got things like the philadelphia experiment which right. we would encourage everyone to look into but that's an experiment essentially where the government were playing with uh in invisibility and teleportation and inadvertently caused a um, a time warp right. if that makes sense mm -hmm. so there's all these things that people could go and research quantum physics you know time travel is no biggie mm. yeah a philadelphia <laughs> experiment is definitely one we've got mm -hmm. to dive into definitely yeah. one we've got to dive into yeah so at the time they went back in time to about where well, it would have had to been before 1914 so around that time period they went back in time and they made contact 1914 with, yes it would have had to been before that time mm. and i'll explain why once we get on to that mm -hmm. um so they went back in time and they made contact with a lady called madame blavansky now um she headed a society known as the theosophical society so in those times you had these uh you know you have all these secret organizations and societies all around the world you know this is not a ironically not a hidden fact yeah. you, you know it's, it's very searchable and the theosophical society was a spin-off from another society called the thule society mm. but anyway they made contact with madame blavansky who was well known for practicing in what they called the occult you know a well well-known witch you know practice witchcraft however you want to put yeah, it right. yeah and you know to to carry forward their plans and Madame Blavansky and the Theosophical and the Full Society then nominated Hitler, Adolf Hitler, to become the contactee um, on planet Earth to these particular set of extraterrestrial beings. And he was nominated in 1914, mm. which is where we, where we get on to. Mm. Now, what's so important about that year, and it's something that Ray always eloquently, eloquently explains, is that 1914 was the year when the First World War kicked off. Right. So obviously you've got to look at these things and say, well, that's no coincidence mm. whatsoever. Now, what was interesting, and again, this is something that we know Rea breaks down very well, was that, you know, World War I, Germany lost that war. But World War II, Germany's power became very prominent. It almost became like a world power, 
a world power, which is where you, why you hear terms like the Third Reich and things like that, if that made sense. Now, what uh, the master explained is that, yeah, these technologies were given Hitler. These, sorry, extraterrestrials were given Hitler technology, which is why um, Nazi Germany were resp or Nazi Germany were responsible for inventing some of the most, you know, innovative warcrafts we would have seen during that period, mm. namely things like the V1 uh, missile, the V2 rocket, which was briefly mentioned in the film Oppenheimer, if right. anyone's seen it. Right. Yeah, because yeah. we've got to get onto that as well. Exactly. Yeah. So um, they were studying um, anti-gravitational technology, what you might call UFO technology, and that's because they were trading with these beings. So that's how Germany or Nazi Germany were able to become such a prominent you know world powerful force in between world war one and world war two yeah, because you would think if, if a country yeah. loses a world war yeah. it's going to be a while before exactly going to be a significant power on the world scale exactly so, exactly yeah. that yeah. so yeah um there's other such evidence you can look into um this is there's programs like asian aliens uh, you can find this on the internet uh, it was explained that there was a particular year i can't recall what year it was but there was a a what citizens what citizens claim was a, a crash in the black forest of mm. germany i think it's freiburg was, was was what the area was called anyway the next day citizens witnessed um a ufo that had crash landed in the forest or would it be a uo at that point because it wasn't flying yeah 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 so it's not yeah yeah so um yeah and they also said they saw um adolf hitler's ss troops uh, recover the you know crash landed ufo from site and take it back to his military bases and reverse engineer mm. these things so there's a lot of evidence out there to support the fact that um hitler was in contact with extraterrestrials another very important thing actually was um eugenics if we you know understand what that term means mm. Eugen eugenics is basically the practice or practice of selective breeding so as we understand through Hitler's movements, through the Holocaust and things like that, um, certain groups of beings were very discriminated against, one being the Jews, you know, others being people with disabilities, mental illnesses, um, you, know, it, you know, people of what you might call color, black people, whatnot. Mm. Um, and that was because he heavily uh, believed if you like or followed the philosophy of eugenics which was selective breeding now he believed that the superior race was the race he called the aryans which were blonde-eyed blue-haired race now the question is blue-eyed blue-eyed or blonde-haired blue-eyed and blonde-haired yeah, so yeah. he believed that the blonde-haired, blue-eyed people were the superior race and yeah. he referred to them as the Aryans. So obviously the question is why? Why? Exactly. And as the master explained, well, these beings from Ashtar Command were literally in that image. So when you talk about the Bible saying, let us make man in the image and likeness of God, to Hitler, these beings were God or gods, if, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. So that was what heavily influenced his movement. He saw them as the perfect beings and he wanted to perfect the human race, so to speak, if right. that makes sense. Would, would, he have, would he have seen them in such a light because of their advanced technology or where they were in comparison to humans? And Most so definitely. So Most definitely. These um, extraterrestrial beings, entities, were way more technologically advanced um, than what would have been seen here on this planet at that day and time mm. if that in that day and time if that mm. makes sense so most definitely um like like master said he saw them as gods angels you know whatever and he wanted to follow that that image so mm. to speak so yeah um that when you start looking at the story from all these sort of angles you start to see that this actually fills in the gaps and right. you should start to see okay it makes a bit more sense why Hitler was moving the way he was moving, if mm. that makes sense. Mm. So yeah, it's it's, uh, it's it's very interesting. The master also explained that um, Hitler was introduced to a lot of um, extraterrestrials that exist down here on Earth, mm. um, in what we call the caverns of Earth, Shambhala, Ag Agatha, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Um, so what the master has explained is that um, the the earth itself is not completely solid all the way to the central. It's actually hollow and there are cities that exist 
within the earth, you know, below ground level, mm. if that makes sense. And a lot of extraterrestrial beings reside there. And again- It's funny, just on that now as well, not even to interrupt, but you see they put a lot of this in their movies. Mm -hmm. A lot of these facts, they throw them in their movies. And if anyone's paid attention, they've recently dropped a trailer for the new Kong. I think it's Kong and Godzilla. I don't know. I saw the two of them charging <laughs> alongside each other this time. They didn't even see them. Yeah, no, they weren't fighting each other. <laughs> they, 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 they were on the same side. So there must be some bigger villain. But the point is, is that when you're dealing with Kong and when you're dealing with other species that are in the movie, you see it in the trailer. Mm -hmm. They even say it in the trailer. Mm -hmm. They say, they introduced the trailer by saying for years, we thought life was only on the surface of the planet. Mm -hmm. And then we were wrong or whatever it is. And obviously they're dropping those little truths in the in their movies yeah hide, it, hiding the truth in plain sight in plain sight when we it's did we so. did we did explain so hollow earth back. yeah yeah just have yeah. that have that pop, yeah pop yeah popping up on the screen right now hollow earth um but we explained that yeah the, the earth has been hollow since its creation mm -hmm. and it was created as such and we explained the whole scientific process mm -hmm. behind how the earth became hollow mm -hmm. if you and if you go into the creation of the planet again existence how and why and it, and it explains okay just what was going on in early earth, so to speak, we, obviously we're using earth. We have other tones, Patar, Nun, mm -hmm. Tiamat, so on and so forth. Explaining that, yeah, there were certain chemical reactions that caused the earth to become hollow upon its creation. So that early. So when the initial seeding of the planet took place and beings were coming from Orion, our ancestors, or Sabbatat Sirius, to the surface, to seed on the surface of the, of the planet or seed in the waters, there were also beings that came and said, whoa, this earth, this hollow. Yeah, yeah this, this is a, a nice, nice spot. spot. Yeah. yeah. And they build my city right <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. Which incidentally as well, not to not to um to go on, but incidentally as as well, what Baba has pointed out in recent years, last decade or more, we've been seeing a lot of sinkholes. Mm -hmm. And he explained that a lot of those sinkholes were arriving because a lot of the extraterrestrials that were beneath the surface were leaving and them leaving was leaving a gap, if mm -hmm. you like, and eventually the the earth was just really sinking away mm -hmm. and the sinkholes would appear and it was mm -hmm. a sign of the times because they're leaving <laughs> they're leaving because it ain't a great time to be yeah, on the planet like nah nah it's this ain't the, this ain't the spot <laughs> yeah we're gone we're gone so incident not to interrupt but just to point that out as well if they check out that video on hollow earth you get the science behind what 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 retu is talking about but yeah. Go ahead, yeah yeah but essentially um you know that's what bobby was explaining is is that um, extra tr um, Hitler was introduced to a lot of these extraterrestrials within the the caverns in the earth. Mm. Um, you know, there's a lot of um, different type of entities, the masters explained that exist within these caverns, you know, beings like the Deros and the Teros. Uh, he even explained that um, it's beings that look like those um, aliens from Predator, the movie Predator. Right, yeah. right, they're, and they're, yeah. The Andromedans. Yeah. And, and they all live in, within they the They don't earth. look good. <laughs> no, don't. I would be afraid too if they I, they if I saw them. Good. Keep yeah. the mask on. Yeah. <laughs> they don't look good. But he wasn't the only one. Um, Admiral Bird. Right. Uh, saw cavern, saw extraterrestrials and caverns within the earth. So mm. there's been a lot of people in in passing that have witnessed these sort of things. So what happens is, uh, for lack of a better word, history just tends to be forgotten or wiped away. Mm. But even like I said, if if you look up 1952 in the Big Flap, this was a huge year. There were a lot of extraterrestrial sightings. So it's just amazing how we just forget, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, the world yeah. just moves on. Exactly. Get some with the day to day. Yeah, Forget exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, it was a um a very interesting time, and like you said, the master was filling in the gaps and explaining the other side to Hitler's story and what was going on, mm. if that makes sense, and why Hitler was doing what he was doing and why he was so technologically advanced and how he'd become a world power, you know, a world power from um losing in the first world war to pretty much almost dominating the second world war yeah. if that makes they sense they got close we're gonna yeah. get ray actually to come on and break down the wars because yeah. germany were causing havoc <laughs> yeah. they got close to yeah. achieving what they needed to achieve yeah. they got very close so yeah it's definitely an interesting one when we're looking at hitler so primarily what we're saying is that because he was given those extraterrestrial technologies mm -hmm. and because he saw these beings mm -hmm. so that the, given the technologies is really the how how he was able to do what mm -hmm. he was able to do and why was because he saw these beings exactly that he thought were gods yeah, exactly and so he was like well okay we all need to look like that we need to try and perfect the race mm -hmm. so to speak pretty so, much so it's an interesting perspective pretty much yeah very interesting perspective yeah. so with that being said 
the fact that okay hitler saw these beings as gods mm -hmm. you mentioned the quote from the bible let us make man in our image mm -hmm. for lack of a better word lack of a better term from a certain perspective were these beings gods or were they not how would you yeah, how would you describe them god is a, is a very interesting word because it's relative it, you know it just it depends on what perspective you're talking from um, what what do you mean by God? Do you mean your creator? Do you mean the power that be? Because everyone from that perspective has a different creator and power and power that be, or who they look up to. So, so, so it's a very interesting word. Yeah. But um, in in that respect, you know, the master's released a lot of books, so many books over the years. Um, you, you know, in the older school, he, re he released the uh, Supreme Mathematics set of books, that which includes Man from Planet Riss, um, Shambhala and Agatha, Mission Earth and the extraterrestrial involvement, etc. Um, and in in this new school, he's released things like um, eighteen plus eighteen plus one equals thirty seven genes of the mitochondrial DNA, Bigfoot, and he's explained that um, each sort of race on this planet has their own extraterrestrial uh, creators, if you like, or those mm. that were responsible for seeding them or intercepting with their genes etc and what the master explained is that the Pleiadians and the ashtar command had a lot to do with the creation of the caucasian race if that makes sense mm. so from his point of view looking at them as god you can't really say that he's wrong if that makes sense mm. um certainly as far as creation certain as certainly as as far as what well, they were the power that is is if that makes sense mm. you know in the same way for lack of a better word, your your pet might look to you because you're the one that provides its food, food if that makes sense. Mm. So it's just based upon perspective, right. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. For those. But with that being said, one thing that we're always pushing, obviously, is that when we're dealing with the let us make man in mm -hmm. our image, mm -hmm. quote, there are different images mm -hmm. of man around the planet. Exactly. Which, which moves to suggest, as you said, that there are different creators of, course, of these men, of women course, because around the, the planet. You know, that, that phrase is flawed. Let us make man in our image and likeness. Well, have you have you taken a look at the variety of, of human beings on this planet? We're not all in the same image and likeness. Mm. So it, of course, makes sense that there were different beings responsible for different creations. Right, yeah. right. And, and so a couple of things I want to touch on that as well. As African people, we've mentioned it before, but it would be good to hear from you on it. Mm -hmm. Who do we look to as our creators, as our watchers, if we want to use that term, mm -hmm. our gods, mm -hmm. but our creators, our angels, our overseers, who do we look to? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, that would be Parnatharu. Um, anyone who studied Africa might have heard the term, the Natiru or, or tones like that, you know, uh, uh, our ancestors that were depictive in depicted in hieroglyphs etc so those are the beings that we've looked towards so obviously in our culture we accept that um you know the blood of the ancestors essentially runs through our veins very literally because all, all the being you are you're made up of your ancestors going four generations back so we acknowledge our salafu which is our immediate blood ancestors and parnafaru which are those um supreme beings if you like from the star systems orion and sirius that were responsible for seed in our type of life on earth if that makes sense mm. so those are the beings we we would look to and again it's just i don't even do we don't even really we just say you know parnafaru or overseas we don't even tend to really use the word god in that makes mm. if that makes sense because like we said god is just such a a yeah, blurry it's, word it's a toss-up term yeah yeah yeah. It is, yeah and it's become used oh you know, i mean it has been used to control people usually by way of fear in this modern world of course yeah, so of when course. we're dealing with the the three modern day religions one thing we always say, say is that a lot of it is based on fear mm -hmm. it's really fear of death yeah if you like and yeah. what's going to happen to you in the afterlife, the afterlife yeah. and so i always say that if you have a group of beings that need to be civilized mm -hmm. then perhaps religion has its place but mm -hmm. if you have a group of beings that needs to be downgraded then religion also has its place mm -hmm. downgraded i mean from god mm -hmm. so if you want to you want true elevation into what we are and what we were in our original form then we need to graduate away from the modern day religions mm -hmm. if you like and more towards our culture it's not to say we didn't have cultural practices this is ultimately where all these religions have come from we had our cultural practices we had our way of contacting our ancestors and you when you hear things like prayer so on and so forth they have all come out of what we used to do 
in uh, in ancient times, but we do need to move towards it. Indeed, we, we, we do. One thing I want to throw at you as well is what can people look to when we talk about extraterrestrials creating mm -hmm. humanoids or human beings on a yes. planet? We've got the Pleiadians having created the Caucasians, Parnatalu having created the Africans, and every other race having their own creators also. What can people look to in order to, you know, evidence, clues, uh, proof of this fact? Does so much, sense? so much evidence. Mm. It's just unreal. Mm. Um, first of all, when we talk about extraterrestrial creation, we have to ask ourselves, well, what, on, on what level are we talking about creation? Because the very... Um, origination of life on this planet is extraterrestrial in nature and what i mean by that is if anyone looks up the term panspermia panspermia is a is is a, is a school of thought which acknowledges that basically the ingredients for life um that you know the ingredients for life that is created on earth pre-exist or already exist outside of earth and this is something that's being studied now, you know, comets, asteroids, uh, meteors, they all contain things like amino acids, ice, which is water, which is life, isn't mm. it? Even uh, recently, you know, um, our, our guy, Neil deGrasse Tyson, <laughs> was talking about um, Comet Bennu, wasn't he? Mm. Yeah, and how they're studying that mm. and things of that nature, even though he later went on to say a little bit of silliness about extraterrestrials and and he didn't believe it because they look too human, which didn't make sense to me. Mm. But, um, but in what he was explaining, he was explaining that they recently captured some ingredients from Comet Bennu. And this is something that frequently scientists do. So they know that um, the ingredients, the precursors for life already exist in, in these elements that are outside of space. And in our culture, we acknowledge that and we call this uh, concept uh, Par Bernanu or the Bennu that when these uh, meteors or comets hit the planet, they were responsible for sparking life on the planet, if that makes sense. So even the very origination of life, bacteria and things like that is extraterrestrial in its nature. Mm. But when we're looking for evidence of extraterrestrial involvement in, you know, in our, our life, human life, whatever, one of the things we can look to, which is uh, something that Baba made us aware of, is the fact that, 223 genes within the human genome do not exist on the evolutionary scale. So what that what that means to say basically is that um, evolution, which has been scientifically scientifically proven as real, even though um, the way Charles Darwin presented it wasn't accurate, but the concept of evolution is mm. correct, if that makes sense. So what he explained is, yeah. So if you have these um beings evolving and you have 20 223 unknown genes that exist in the human genome where did these genes come from if they have no predecessors on the evolutionary chart mm. and the master explained well that's because they're extraterrestrial there were extraterrestrial interceptions and extraterrestrials coming down and breeding with humans and all these different sort of things mm. that were happening um, another piece of evidence we could look at is the RH negative and RH positive uh, factor within the blood, if we, mm. if we understand that concept. So obviously we know we have four blood types, right? A, B, A, B, and O. Mm. And those vary as to whether they're RH negative and RH positive. Now the RH um, positive blood types, and this is a scientific fact, has existed long way 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 before rh negative if that makes sense and rh negative um is pretty new as compared yeah, to in, in comparison, the, yeah. in comparison yeah. to to life on this earth and what the what bubba was explaining is yeah that blood type came from the pleiadians which is why it um went into the crow magnums and 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 originally the original caucasian being but being that we're mixed now um you know, you see different beings with this blood type, if that makes sense. But there's a reason that RH negative is quite rare as compared to RH positive. And that's one of the reasons why it's because it's a new type of blood type mm. that was introduced um, at, in a certain time period, if that makes sense. So there's various things we can look for and see, well, yeah, we can see that there's extraterrestrial existence. Even the very um, design of mitochondrial DNA, which is what um, Butler explained. If you look at the design of mitochondrial DNA, 
because it is circular in structure that Bubba explained that yeah, extraterrestrials use mitochondrial DNA to conceal genes inside them and only activate them when they want to activate them so mm. they can actually exist within mitochondrial DNA independent of the actual organism that the mitochondrial DNA exists within, if that makes yeah, sense. Deep. So yeah, there's a, you know, there's, there's a lot you can look for. Um, and even just, again, the extraterrestrial sightings, Bigfoot, which the master explained, um, even some of the DNA of Bigfoot winded up in, you know, within the human family, if yeah. you like, that yeah. makes sense. So that, you know, there's, there's quite a substantial amount of evidence mm. to look into yeah. and see yeah. these things. For people to, to, to research it and dive into it. Exactly. Yeah, it, leads exactly. In, it leads you into a different world. <laughs> it it leads does. You into a different world. Another, another point I'd make is even religion itself. When you go into those who are into the religious texts, when you go into those texts, you find plenty of extraterrestrial activity if you know what you're looking for. <laughs> exactly. The book is an extraterrestrial book. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> God is an extraterrestrial. Yeah. And there are other extraterrestrials involved. And yeah, yeah it's a, it's an important context because obviously going back to that to that point that we mm -hmm. made earlier in terms of let us make man in our image and likeness. This is a as we've mentioned before, this was a particular type of man. Mm -hmm. they were referring to mm -hmm. and in the bible that was a particular creation story exactly and there are several creation stories yes. yeah. right yeah and, and we we always of course point out that um again it's, it's, it's about mistranslation and language translate uh the power being in the hands of the translators mm. because um the master explained is if you look at um the adam and eve story god says be fruit through and multiply it multiply and replenish the earth first of all he's using the word replenish mm. so if you're replenishing that, that means, means you, you're yeah. doing something again it's isn't it you're yeah it's been <laughs> plenished yeah it's been plenished <laughs> but yeah. what the master pointed out if you look at um genesis he says be fruitful and you know mo multiply and replenish the earth then in the noah story he says the exact same thing be fruitful mm. and multiply and replenish the earth so there was a, a cycle, a rebirth. Mm. And what the master explained is if you go back to the Hebrew, um, in the Genesis story, they used the um, term barashif, which means recreation or rebirth. Mm. So the Genesis story wasn't the original creation story. It was just another exactly. one on the line. Coupled yeah. that with the fact that the, the story is only 6,000 years old, that starts to make some sense, doesn't it? Mm. Being that there's proof that human life existed long before 6,000 years ago. Way before. So, way yeah. Before. So then it makes you think and makes you understand that, okay, this is something that's happened and happened and will keep happening. It's exactly. happened several times and mm. will happen several more times. A book I want to point people towards actually is, actually three books if you like, but two books really. You've got The Flood, part of that scroll, and you've got I Was There, which Just is here, here with part one and part two. So three books there um, to look into. Because when we're dealing with, you mentioned Noah's Flood, which mm -hmm. are, by the way, I mean, you've always told, you've told me for many, many years, this is a story that's happened in several different cultures and you can yeah. tie back into Sumerian culture if you wish to. Um, but you have a situation where in, in, in the flood and I was there, which was here, Baba Yenon explains that these floods or these catastrophic events have happened plenty of times before. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but they're set to happen. It's part of nature. Mm -hmm. And when you understand duality, you understand that creation and destruction it are the same thing on different yeah. ends of the scale. It's, exactly. it's the continuing existence, creation, destruction. We see them as completely different things. Opposites are in, essentially in some ways the same, mm -hmm. which means that destruction is part of creation. Mm -hmm. And in order to create, you must destroy that which is there. Mm -hmm. And so the whole cycle of these planets and the cycles that they go through, these floods, these meteorites hitting the planet, we speak of the dinosaurs and the stories there, these catastrophic events, we're seeing quite a few now mm -hmm. and I've seen some in the last few years when we were talking about earthquakes of huge magnitudes. I think Turkey got hit early this year with a bad one, um, not to mention some of the uh, human-made catastrophes like war, mm -hmm. death and so on and so forth. These things are all part and parcel of different cycles mm -hmm. and every cycle must come to an end, if you like. And yeah. the, end, the end might not be nice from our perspective, but... That's the concept of the Bennu, isn't it? Out of the ashes, what will rise? Exactly. If that makes sense. Exactly. So, yeah, these are um, these are important stories to make sure that we're Very. familiar with. And I would always say, once when you go to the religious texts and you're able to decipher what's really going on, 
then we can go to Partalak, actual fact, and it will clear everything up for you. And the perspective, certainly as Africans, that we should be looking at things from. Mm -hmm. So yeah, valuable, valuable. Okay, we got through a little bit there. We got through a little yeah, bit there. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot and so much more to tell. Yeah, yeah, we, got, <laughs> we definitely got to get him back in yeah. every time. I, I like this guy, he's not too bad. <laughs> I'll consider it. Yeah, yeah, we'll think, of it. we'll think on it, we'll think on it. We'll think on it's it. That, that's, that's the love that the big brother gets. It's, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. He just got to accept it, <laughs> move past it. But no, it was, that, was, that was very interesting. Obviously, the Hitler stuff is intriguing. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we know sensitive times right now surrounding, surrounding but we'll get, we'll get to that. We'll get to that if we choose to in terms of the situation going, in Palestine, going on in Palestine and so on and so forth. But the Hitler stuff is important for people to know because, again, it's always just important for people to know the extra layer of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I'm online now and I see a lot of people these days speaking about extraterrestrials, mm -hmm. speaking about their involvement in and creating humans, speaking mm -hmm. about their involvement on the planet and what mm -hmm. they're doing and, and what they've done mm -hmm. and what they will do, so on and so forth. And it's just important to acknowledge that a lot of this information, outformation, has come to life because of Baba Yanana. And he's been teaching on it for quite some time. Some, quite some very time. long time. For a very, long, very time. long time. So we've touched on a bit on the Ashtar command, the Pleiadians. We, the next time we get you on, I, I definitely want to touch on the Philadelphia experiment. And obviously, I want to talk about the Anunnaki, because obviously, when we speak about the gods of the Bible, mm -hmm. today, we've mentioned the Pleiadians. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we've previously, and people might have heard the mention of the Anunnaki in, mm -hmm. in relation to the gods of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And it's important, important to know that there was a collaboration there, isn't there? So hopefully, we can go into the details of that, which again, ties in with the line, let us make man in our, our image, image and likeness. likeness. In the image of the Pleiadians, in the likeness of the Anunnaki. So... Hopefully we can go in, not even hopefully, we'll go into the Anunnaki, break them down, break down that situation. Philadelphia experiment, time travel, so on and so forth. We have to break that down, talk a little bit more about Oppenheimer as well. So there's several things to get into, but that was a good, that was a good little start. It's a good little start. Very interesting, very intriguing. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll round that up. Nefertat, what, what do I say at the end of an episode? I tell, people, <laughs> I tell them to subscribe or what do I say? Subscribe, <laughs> hit that subscribe button, like yeah. that. say it like that. It's yeah. a little aggressive. Oh, it's too loud. <laughs> I'm scared. All right, if you if you if you could hit that subscribe button, <laughs> stay stay up to date with our releases. Turn your notification bell on so that you know every time we put something out. Follow us. We're on all the platforms. YouTube, obviously, we're here. We're on TikTok, Instagram, all of them ones. Yeah, all the podcast platforms. That, yeah, and all the podcast platforms that the new kids be using. Right, so follow us on all of those. Stay up to date. Um, we've got more content coming for you very, very soon. And it, it was a pleasure, Retu Petty Bass Yeah, it was a pleasure to be here. All right, I look forward to the next time. Yes, as do I. Okay, <laughs> farewell. Wadu. Wadu. <laughs>